basically I show the initial model and the, some models what have been stored from the design softwares from AutoCAD, Civil 3D, uh, Tecla Structures, Tecla Civil, Novo Point, so on. So basically goal is to show how this uh, data model server is working. So uh, it's uh, we concentrate to Trimble Quadri here and uh, how it has come from 88, there has been planned to build this uh, model-based, uh, data model-based uh, server. And uh, we have done uh, many years to do that. And now it's in the market, has been now in the market several years. We have done lots of cooperation with the, all the authorities and also these uh, uh, financing companies and uh, also uh, these uh, institutions. And of course, largest customers around Nudic. So uh, the customers are why we are doing this. If we do good software, but no one needs that, that's uh, useless to use money. So we have involved our customers in very, very early phase. In Finland, uh, sorry, in Nudix, sorry, uh, our market share is uh, quite big, but we have worked very hard to, to get that. So uh, over 15,000 users, customers, organizations over 3,000, maybe almost near 4,000. And uh, we have applications, 25. Product manager is saying that we have too many applications, but I think not. But Trimble Quadri, it's a PIM server for collaboration. It's a cloud service and available to all users when they need. It has included this integrated process, so everybody is in the same process, have a same task model for, for doing the project. So basically, you don't have the problem with, uh, for example, AutoCAD layers or things like that, because now the model is telling where and how to boot and who is in charge of that. All the terrain information and GIS information is included there. Uh, so uh, if someone puts and adds some data there, it's available for all. So it's not uh, sending some survey files to everybody and everybody makes a new triangle model. It's a one triangle model, everybody will use that. And of course the design information is included there. It's very simple to use. There's a two buttons, share and receive, and the buttons are quite big. So I think it's simple enough. And uh, the most important thing is that uh, it's a shared tasks and the user can decide when they share the data and when not. That has been sometimes problem that people don't share because they think it's too early phase, but actually early phase is much better to share the data. You get the very good comments about your material. All this uh, data is in one place. It's very easy to organize in IT perspective all the packups and, uh, and, and uh, security systems and, and that kind of thing. And the full control to the project. So you can all the time see how it goes forward, the design project. If there is no road model or railway model, you know no one has done anything. So it's very simple also to see. If the model is empty, nothing has happened. And also that uh, it's very, very easy to, to learn. So basically our users have said that it takes one day to, to learn. After that, they just use the software and that's the good part there. There is a lot of applications, but the, the heart is this quadri and it can be Nova Point modules, it can be Tecla Civil modules, it can be uh, models from the Tecla structures, from Civil 3D, from MicroStation, and so on. So there's a very good tools to store data to your uh, database. There are different platforms. You can use it uh, with tablet, with mobile phone, and of course with a computer. That's the main, the computer and the tablet and uh, mobile phones. It's for, for uh, outside and very simple models there. Lots of disciplines and uh, also that you have this cloud service. That's very important. Uh, to understand, it's also possible to make on-premise version or private cloud, but when you have it in cloud, you can get also your client to involve to the project. 
But basically, design applications through the Nova Point base, you put the data to the Quadri. Simple as that. So uh, it goes through the internet, so that's a good one. We have uh, quite good uh, 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 references, like Tukrail. They have an organization what, which, which was very, there was a departments, and they didn't communicate to got together. Now they have a Quadri server, so they communicate quite a lot because the, all the data flows through the organization in process-wise, not through the organization. It's in the project. And that's, uh, that's a really, really good uh, issue for them. Also, the, who is uh, owners and contractors, they uh, think that uh, they get the knowledge where the project is going on, what's happening, what's the next phase, what, what, what's going to happen in next weeks, and they can prepare things beforehand, not when they are a little bit late. And they are sure that, uh, as my previous presentation, they are sure that they are able to, to get better quality for design with the workflow through the server. And um, practically zero downtime cost design errors, which is a big issue, issue there. Okay, I will show now uh, the software. So I will uh, show you uh, model which is uh, from uh, city of Tampere. I uh, shut down this one. So this is uh, raw data. Normally when you get the raw data, it looks like this. It's like a spider net. So uh, you have lots of, as we uh, discussed, you have lots of 2D information, as you can see over here. Then you have a 3D information, you have uh, city plans and uh, different types of uh, data for, for uh, different purposes. Of course, you have to start to clean to get the initial model. But uh, the structure over here, you can see that the raw data, and this is based on these uh, requirements. So it's very easy to see what type of material I have, for example, existing situation under the raw data. So I know that there is a material for, for calculations there. And uh, for example, here I have an initial model after cleaning. Normally, to clean the raw data and get this, it's not just one click. You have to use quite a lot of time to, to get that. So just to be sure that you understand, <laughs> it's not that you just right click there. So uh, basically, you get the model. And uh, in the city model, they have also uh, made uh, in 3D DVG all the buildings in that city. So it's available to use uh, for all designers. And also, you can see the boreholes. You can see the pipelines, which are over here, underground, and uh, uh, terrain. And subsurfaces are also modeled, modeled uh, through the uh, boreholes. Also, you are able to, uh, we have reference data, for example, this uh, orthophotos. So uh, I will track. Faster you have internet, faster is it working. So basically, you get the quite good overview of the area when you can collect the data from the different uh, places and different servers. So basically, this is the start to, to design. And uh, there is a ho we have made a hole here so we can show what's under there. But uh, that's the only for viewing perspective. An area plan or city plan is uh, with the different colors, different symbol lines over here. So you can use it there. OK. Uh, also, when you have, for example, here uh, structures, uh, for example, pipelines, you can open only those. So you can, you don't have to open the whole model. So you can, when you have the structure based on requirements, you can o open only those issues for 3D and check that everything is okay. 
So basically, it doesn't mean that you have to have everything all the time open. So we can see here, maybe there's a problem in the modeling because the manhole and the pipeline is uh, clashing over there. But uh, I will shut down some windows over here. So, uh, and when you have the structure is okay, so you can also take that we uh, select, for example, design model and, uh, and the initial model in the same time, so you get the, the result of the design. So all the design is over here. So you can see that, okay, there is a, someone has made a street over there. There is a street, there is an intersection over here. Uh, manholes are a little bit up. You can get trouble about that. And then uh, if I remember right, there is uh, one building over here. This is IFC model, which has been put it into the model uh, by uh, Martin. And actually Martin has made the roundabout. I think we have uh, some trouble with the uh, people who are living here. But maybe Martin has discussed with them, I hope. It can't be, yeah. We just send the model to Ville and Ville will go with the machines and say that this is what I got from the server. Sorry. But basically uh, the idea is that you, you are able to have a different type of disciplines in the same model. You have uh, modeled those with a different ways, different uh, products and uh, integrated that to the one server. Every time when you are there, of course, you, you can ask the server, you log in. You can ask the server if there are any changes in the server, and it will uh, connect to the server and goes through the, the data if something has changed, and it will ask, do you want to add the latest data to the design? So, but you must be asked to go open manually? Yes, yes. Okay, the network is not speed enough, so... Uh, this, uh, there was uh, one time we had this online, and the problem was that someone put it, for example, laser scanned data, one gigabyte there, so all the machines start to load it. And everybody else who were, didn't know what's happening was thinking that why it's so slow. So that's why we put it that the, it's uh, better to do. Sorry, it's too, too uh, slow, the, um, the connection over here. Uh, then there is this, uh, as we called, uh, Facebook. So you can go uh, here. Uh, you can make a note to the model that uh, it goes too near the house. And uh, you can also zoom with the note that it knows that, okay, where the picture has taken. So it will zoom there. When, when you have, and the problem is over here that uh, the layer structures are going to the yard area. But basically, if you want to make a note over here, what about the house over here? Uh, we go over here and say that we take a picture. Not fixed. Sorry. So it will upload my note. It will, will go all the designers who are working in the same project. And there is a other user interface over here. Uh, there is, uh, for example, here is a discussion in the website. So I will check where, it, yeah, there was a mistake in the. Those who doesn't have uh, uh, the, viewer or computer which can handle the 3D data, they can come here with the web browser. And with the dashboard, for example, uh, clients normally use this one. They can see the map. They can see what has happened in the last 200, 200 days. And also uh, they ha can have these uh, discussions. They can have uh, all the models. I get the trouble with the net. So they can see uh, the models in the web browser, so you don't need license or any special computer there. And it can be used also with the mobile phone. If you go to the 
for example, the map. So you can open the map over here to mobile phone or tablet and uh, zoom to the project. And then you can say current position. Unfortunately, we are quite far away from there. So uh, I think we are Riga now. Yes, we are. But basically, uh, there's a lots of user interface to the client to follow up the, the project. And maybe one, one of the uh, key issues is that you can make these uh, notes and topics and attachments. And also in here, you can, uh, so for example, Jani Laukkanen has taken away these kind of issues from the database. Because all who has uh, ac uh, access to the server with a real client, which has an edit possibility, it make a log file all the time. If some, someone adds, edits, takes away, and so on, so responsibilities are clear in this uh, user interface. But that was the server. I give uh, now machine to the Martin. So now the idea would be to show you the uh, design phase. So Villa was talking about a lot about Tecla Civil in his presentation. So that's the program they use for their purposes. So that's the program I would like to show you more about. Uh, yes. So first, few words about what the software does, or maybe few words about myself. So my name is Martin Kriis. I work with Thomas in Vianova Systems Finland. And the background is in road design. I used to work in uh, as a road designer in Rambo a few four years ago. Then I went to Trimble and my responsibility was to sell Tecla Civil software and to do different kind of consultancy work with that. And then uh, this year in uh, May, we moved the sales organization to Vianova Systems Finland. So since then I started in, in Vianova. Vianova Systems Finland taking care of Tecla Civil and uh, then some other other softwares related to that. So uh, what Tecla Civil is or where is it being used at this point is mainly 99, 98% of our users are in Finland and it's used in uh, different kind of infrastructure work. So the railways, roads, uh, highways, streets, utilities, water structure and channels. So for the design mostly. Then we have few cities also who are either doing design or then uh, using the software for keeping different kind of registers in our in our databases. But what we say it's like a comprehensive solution for civil engineering design and data data management kind of kind of a thing. And three main things where we are we are trying to be strong. This is also a database driven solution. I will tell you more about that in the next slide. Uh, then constructible models. Since we became Trimble, it's more and more important for us to be able to produ produce constructible models. So the models would be le was talking about, where we can put them directly to the to the machine, and the machine can then 3D machine control can be used to to construct those stuff. So that's very important for us to be able to produce those kind of things. And then uh, the view the project in the whole 3D. So there is Tecla Civil. From the name, you can guess that it's behind the Tecla. Tecla kind of uh, technology, so we're using the same 3D technology as it's used in, in uh, Tecla structures and also Tecla beam site. So we are trying to put the, all the disciplines in one place, so houses, bridges, IFC, 3D DVG, reference data with uh, native civil design data. So that's the, that's the main, there's three main things what we are trying to achieve. And this is about the, the database driven thing. So how the software works is that you have a data model in here that's Oracle database is de facto standard. Uh, all our customers use Oracle. So you have all the data at one time in one place. So we can, for example, if we use Quadri as the initial data model, this could be a soft, uh, s this uh, design data model. So we can bring the initial data from Quadri here. And then all the designer groups and also construction site can work around the same model as Villa was was kind of uh, to talking about in his in his speech. So you have a real-time multi-user environment. Everybody uses one data. You don't have to be worried about am I using the last version or is it your last week's version or this kind of things. Everything is taken care of by using the using the database in one model. 
Then you can do different kind of communication and cooperation around the model. I will get back to that in the demo. What kind of data we have are we create into this, this uh, design model? So there's terrain models, of course. You bring in terrain models from laser scanners or surveyors or whatever what technology is used to collect this terrain model data. Then you can have soil investigations in there. Those are objects in a database, also uh, results of some borehole, borehole uh, technology to bring in. Then you get the information about the soil, what kind of soil we are dealing with in the, in the design. And then we have the infrastructure part, so all the road designs, all the structures, all the alignments, geometry, that's also there, surfaces. Then we have pipes, so pipeline design, uh, sewers, water, water networks, cables, uh, heating, district heating and stuff. Then we have street utilities, so it's like traffic signs, trees, like Villa was mentioning, traffic markings, lightning poles, so they're all just uh, objects in a database which have a certain visualization technique and have attributes that we can access. Geostructures, um, pillar stabilizations, different kind of geotechnical, geotechnical modeling can be done also here. Then drawings, the, today was a good discussion about drawings, how to use them and not to use them. So Tecla Civil is doing it so that you have a model first and then you create the drawings. So you, we have a certain techniques to use what we call drawing templates to create the cuts of the model and then produce drawings from that. And then some people like to use AutoCAD afterwards to finalize the drawings, some people not. You can do the drawings in here, but of course we don't want to reproduce AutoCAD, so there is some, some functionality related to that, but maybe AutoCAD is a bit more, more, uh, more better software for that one. And then we have the structure model, so we bring in the reference data, IFCs, houses, bridges, piling slabs, uh, whatever you name it, IFCs, SketchUp models, uh, 3D DVGs, DGN, these kind of things. And then we have S-Build measurements, so that's also the construction side when it's ongoing and they're working around the same model as the, the designer and the construction side, so they bring in the S-Build measurements. So when they take measurements, the machine or the surveyor, he brings the data in the model, in the same model, and then he can compare how the, how the road has been built. So that's like theory behind the software, and then I can show you, show you the actual software, how it, how it works. So uh, right here. So this is one example of one project. This is a city in the North Finland called Kajani, which is the city which is doing a lot of design by themselves. And how they use the software, they have the whole city in one in one project. So this is the size of the terrain model. There is not around million, uh, hundred million points in a terrain model, which is stored in a, in a database, and then they have si different different designs or different kind of plans around the city. And this is one, one of them is this kind of uh, uh, residential area which they, were, which they were modeling. How the software is used, here on the left hand side you have a tree pane similar than in Quadri. So you have the data in the database here, stored in a certain hierarchical way and then you just decide what kind of data you want to see in what view. So if I want to see the pipes, for example, in 3D and in the map, then I come here and show and then the pipes will be shown. And here's the, there's the map view, and this is the 3D view to the software, or to the, to the model. So here we can see the residential area modeled, and here basically in this area, there is everything I was showing in this, uh, in this slide before. So there is uh, road, road designs, all the roads are designed here. There is, there is some reference models like these houses, IFC models. Then I have these existing houses there, which are SketchUp. SketchUp models brought in here. Then I have here uh, trees, traffic signs, a lot of, lot of information. And the thing is, good thing about this is that you can ask, or you can, whatever you click on, you get the information. So if I want to know what this tree is about, I double click the tree, so I get the, I get the, all the information, what the, the, the meta, metadata or the, the attributes, what the designer has put in there. And then this tree, how it looks like, visualization technique comes from SketchUp. So we can use SketchUp, Trimble SketchUp, to download different kind of symbols or models from the 3D warehouse. So we make the uh, trees looking as we want to. The same with the traffic signs, for example. I can here 
double click a traffic sign. So I see what the traffic sign is, what kind of uh, this actual traffic signs is, is uh, binded to this pole. I can change them and do things. Then, of course, we're, we're interested maybe in some sections. So we want to see what kind of uh, road structure is underground. So for that, we can use this kind of basic clipping. So here I can add a basic clip plane. I pick two points and then I get the then I get the section. Uh, then I can move the section to wherever I want to since we are doing model based design so we have it defined in every in every section. Then I'm also cutting this uh, IFC model so this is the the uh, house uh, architecture model of the house. So if I want to know what microwave these people are using, I can also ask ask if it's in the model. You can you can ask that information also. So also the information or the attributes from IFC models are also available for us. But maybe the road designer is more interested in a cross section directly along the along the middle line or or the central alignment. So then I can do uh, this kind of basic cross section view. So I just pick the middle line, center line, and then I get the uh, basic cross section view. And I have the same cross section then in the 3D, so that the 3D is following. That's one thing, one remark to do that usually our designers use is two monitors. So that's uh, that's why the demos are sometimes tricky, that you don't have monitors enough. So this, this 3D is usually here. But now I don't have that possibility. So I have the basic 3D uh, cross section view where I can, for example, look for volumes. I will hold this tight that we get it. So I can show here, for example, the volumes from the road. And then I can start moving the cross section to, what I w to, to the place where I want. And the cross section is then following in here in the 3D. If I go a bit further to this house, so there is uh, interesting models around here. So I have a architecture model of the house. Then I have a MEP model of the house also. So I have the, all the pipes. And here is a good example on how this house and infrastructure is connected to each other. So here we have IFC model, the pipe coming from the IFC model. And based on that information, I have set up a, uh, a manhole, uh, which is the uh, sewage, sewage network in the, in the street. And then I, can, then I can continue designing of the, of the street piping here. And then another thing is if I know the place of the house, I of course need the excavation of the house to be able to build it. So this blue blue surface, that's the excavation of the house. If I if I hide the house from there, you can see that that uh, what we have done. So I hide this architecture model, then I hide this L this MEP model. So here we get the uh, surface from which I get volumes, I get the uh, machine control surfaces and stuff. Then uh, if I hide the structure part, and also uh, this one, so we get the underground data here. So here we have a lot of pipes, quite, uh, quite complex piping networks. Then we have uh, lightning poles, which are modeled in a way that we have also the uh, bases. So if we do the class check, I will show the class checking soon. Yes? Who made this, no, this, uh, all pipes and, uh, these, are, these are designed pipes. These are not old pipes. They are, they are designed. But they can be existing also. So if you, if you have an initial data model, I can tell here in a general status that it's uh, existing. So I can then do s like different different uh, what we call pipe plans. So there can be pipe plan existing, pipe plan uh, designed, and they can be different colors. In this particular model I don't have the existing pipes, but they, they can be they can be here. If I if I do this existing, then my pipes existing pipes will be gray. So I can then divide between the existing and and uh, and a designed. These are designed all. And these strange poles here, those are soil investigations. So if I double click, 
I get the soil investigation data and the diagram to get to know what kind of soil we are we are we are dealing with. So this is kind of the data how we use the data how we use the database. So to this database, uh, we can of course involve the uh, contractor in this design build project like Ville was showing. So this is the way they work. So they have this and then in the from the construction side they can access this, the designers access this and they are just feeding in the, the data what they want to and then everybody can use the same stuff. Let's try to, yeah. So then when we have all this 3D data we can do the clash checking. So we have a button here this kind of button, which calls, which uh, looks for uh, clashes. So I get the, the uh, list of clashes, so then I can go through the list. Here I see my manhole is too close to the tree. I've made a cylinder, which is one and a half meters from the center of a tree. So the manhole is too close. I have to do something about it. I have a clash, for example, of uh, IFC model against the manhole is here. So I can really have a look at look at the uh, different kind of clashes and check how the model has been has been done. But let's go to how we actually create the stuff. So this was the ready-made. So if we go to design space, so here I have a it's the same project. Here I have one bridge, which was brought from Tecla Structures. It's here as a reference model brought into the 3D, 3D 3D view as well. So what I'm gonna do, I will create a piece of a road here or piece of street and then uh, create the roundabout here. So uh, if I start by inserting the road, here we have an insert road dialog where we first give it a name. Create a new road. Then I will initiate the horizontal geometry so I pick the, this will be my center line, future center line of the road. Maybe I give this, you can see better. Then I need, of course, the uh, arcs. This is the easiest way to say around me the chains. So the program gives there some automatic radiuses, but now I can graphically grab these and play, not play, I can uh, define exactly what kind of radius I would like to have here. So I put 50. Then I have different these kind of bars, hand bars that I can modify graphically. The alignment, for example, X offset or move and stuff like that. And then uh, I am interested in profile. So I want to open a profile. So it opens the uh, profile window. Then I have, since I have the bridge here, I see the bridge in the map and also here in the here in the profile window. And I, of course, want to also know the uh, intersection of this alignment since I will be creating a roundabout there later on. So now I just insert the uh, polyline. Starting from the intersecting road, I can snap to the bridge if I need to. But I'll not do it now. And then I go here. Then we can insert the arc again. This is another way, also in the horizontal geometry, just grab the point and drag it up. And then here I can define exact radius if necessary. So now I have a 3D line. Next step is to attach the structure. So I have to pick what kind of cross section I will be attaching to this line. So uh, here I have a li library of uh, cross sections. Here I can show you a few examples what we can do. So there is pretty, you can do pretty much everything. So here is, for example, breakwater structure. You can do, here's a tunnel. I don't say we have tunnel design software, but simple tunnel design you can do. We can do a simple bridge design, just the surfaces. But what we'll go on with is the street. So I have a basic street cut and fill. So I do an attachment and now I can see what kind of structure that is. So how this is created, so this is a road structure. We create it graphically, so we create point by point by giving the points a certain dependencies. 
So there is, for example, between this and this point, there is 3% gradient and 4 meters distance. And this way, I can really graphically uh, create what kind of structure I want. So you have everything in your own hands. If you want to be really detailed, you can be detailed. You don't have to be, depending on what's the stage of the of the project. If you want to bring it to the machine control, you have to be pretty detailed. So this gives you an uh, gives you an opportunity to be. Then, if I have this mathematical model, or maybe a question: Why is it divided into parts? So this is the main part, and this is the part uh, which we call slope part. So uh, if I'm in the if I'm in the cut, I have different slope than if I'm in the, for example, in the embankment. So this is these slope parts are are handling all different situations uh, in the terrain, related to terrain. Then I am defining also the uh, surfaces. So it's again me as a user is defining which points are uh, are having which kind of surfaces. So for example, I have a sub base is here. Then also volumes. I have different volumes defined. So uh, yeah, that's how the that's how structure is done. And then I just attach it to this middle line, this name one, two, three, and from certain chainage to the end. Now if I do attach and close, I have my road modeled. So if you look at the 3D, 3D view and show the surfaces, you can see what we have done in uh, one second. So here is the road we have created. So now I have a continuous road model, so I can check the cross sections anywhere I want. I can go here. And this is my cross section view, and this is my 3D view. So I can go through the structure and check it if everything is fine. Then here I can see the volumes. So it's again to check if my volume calculations are correct. And then here I actually can do the volume calculation. So here I have the table to calculate how much material I need to construct this thing. For example, I have 12,000 cubic meters of cut. And this cut material is there. So that's also a visualization. And now since everything is kind of connected to each other, so if I want to do changes, I decide, OK, this thing is not right. I want to drag it a bit further. Then I just drag it and I press OK. Everything is remade automatically. So I can I get new surfaces. I get new uh, new mat new uh, volume calculations and everything. And also I get new 3D view. So everything is dynamic, bind to each other. Then we have here a good spot to create uh, some roundabout or some uh, intersection. So I will show you that very shortly. So I will take these alignments and then say insert parametric intersection. So what this does, we have algorithm to calculate different kind of uh, different kind of uh, intersections. So in this case, we have options to do T or roundabout. Give it a name. I pick the road which this belongs to. And then here is a lot of parameters which I can parametrically define what kind of what kind of uh, intersection I'll be doing. In this case, I want to pick the roundabout. So here I have a roundabout. And then what's good about this algorithm is that the, everything is done in 3D. So we are taking into consideration the uh, profiles of the intersecting roads. We are considering where the water is flowing. We are considering a lot of things related to, to the to the to the z coordinate or to the to the super elevation. So now I can, for example, define how this roundabout will be tilted. So for example, I want to tilt it 10 percent. Let's make it to crazy much 10 percent to some direction. Nobody will do the roundabout like this, but I can do it here since nobody will. Actually, <laughs> actually uh, construct this, but you can then define the tilting, for example. Then one thing I can do, then I can pick the islands. So here is different islands possible to bring in the basic roundabout island. Oops. 
the island has a lot of parameters also, so every single arc and every single straight I can define define uh, parametrically. One thing is I can define also curves, so there will be 12 centimeters of curve in this island. Then I can copy the parameters to the another legs. So I have three legs here, so I will have the same same uh, legs, leg parameters in all the in all the legs. This third one is here. Yeah, so now we have defined the top layer. Now what we can do, which is funny here, so I can now take this middle point and start dragging it around to find the best spot for the roundabout. And all the parameters are in place, so the calculation is all the time ongoing. So I can fairly simply check for different locations of the roundabout if I have too tight in the previous demo, we have been cutting few houses down. So maybe with this, we can do only two. So and then the last part, what I have to pick is the actual structure. So I am also defining the uh, layers under. So I pick, again, from the library, the intersection structure, of, which is looking similar than the, than the street. So it will have the same, the same look and the same structure there. And now when I press OK, we have modeled the roundabout. Roundabout there. So now if I look at the 3D view and the uh, show you the surfaces, we can see what kind of nice roundabout we have created. And since it's the continuous model, we need a continuous model since soon we are going to put it to the machine. So now I can check again the cross sections and look how, what kind of uh, structure we will, we create it. So here we have the structure there. And then I can go through, through the structure to define, to, def to, to check what my models are looking like. So now I basically have a model which can be used for machine control. So what I can do now, I can take, for example, I have a bulldozer or excavator, so I can show the triangle model. So I'll show you the model which will be then going to the machines. So here is the, here is the bottom layer. Oh, I have to hide here the stuff and I show you the bottom layer of that surface so this kind of this kind of surface will be sent to the machine how we do it in uh, for example in Destia they export to this inframodel file that's the inframodel is the format what Thomas and Vila were talking about so that's the official format and then I export it and then I import it to the, for example, if Trimble is in place, I can directly send the uh, information to Trimble Business Center. And then from there, it goes through the cloud to place like this. So here I have the machine. This is actually the monitor which uh, had the operator has in his, uh, in his machine. So he get this same data as we made here. He get on his monitor and then he can start, start driving. So what he, what he does, he can check for the, now he's five meters in the wrong, in the wrong elevation, so this will be a not that great result. But then he, in the normal case, he will start lifting the blade or doing, doing these kind of things and then running around. And he always have in his monitor the actual goal, what he has to achieve. So that's kind of the idea of a machine control. You feed in the 3D data and you, you, you use it, and b you have to kind of get to the result, which is, which is modeled here. So we have different kind of views. There's the profile view, and here is actual the view that actually they probably use the most. So how much I have to lift my blade to be in the level of, uh, of my bottom layer, what I have sent there. So that's kind of the workflow from initial data to design to the construction 
And then, of course, we can get that from that machine. So what I can do now, I have a machine here. And then this machine can do measurements. So I can then measure. I place this measurement, and then I create points while, while, while constructing. Then I can bring these points back here. So uh, I would then go to work side and bring in the uh, as built measurements and comparison, and then compare compare those 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 data against each other. So that's basically what I wanted to show. One thing, what I can show you also that since we are working against the same database, and Vila was also mentioning this that we can also we doesn't we, it's not always necessary to use it only in the in the office. So we can go out to to the field and we have what we call field mode of the software so we have we have windows windows tablet for example toughpad or or some other other tablets and then i have a different user interface for me to use outside in tablet i'm using the same data exactly the same data and i'm if i when i'm walking around i can get different kind of information i can uh take cross sections for example so if i if i walk around this is this first button up there then i will just show the middle line what i want the cross section from and then i get the cross section cross section view there then when i'm moving around i have a gps not now we are inside but if i'll be outside i have a gps in the in the tablet so i know exactly where i am so I can get the cross-section view from the place where I am. And then uh, yeah, I forgot to publish my, my road, obviously. And then I can also take uh, pictures, photos. This was not a good place. So what I can do outside when I know where I am, uh, I can, for example, take uh, this kind of note tags. So I find something out that, OK, there is some old manhole need to be measured then I can take a picture of that manhole so I'm a manhole and then when I click OK this manhole picture and the note will go to the to the same database so the the designer can directly access this information from the people in the in the field So that's a bit of the field, field mode, field mode thing. So that's it. Any questions about this workflow? Yes. Okay. When we are into the three, three D model, yeah. How we can check a perspective view of driver eye? Uh, yeah. Any mean. image of perspective view. Uh, how looks road when drivers sit in yeah. his car and drive? Yeah, that's a very good question, and that's what these kind of questions we are getting, uh, getting often. It, it, in this point right now, there we don't have that kind of possibility. So there is this kind of different, different kind of uh, driving uh, modeling uh, tools, which we'll see how we proceed in those. But uh, there might be this kind of possibility maybe in the future, but now now there is not such a such a modeling tool in, in place now. No. So you want to drive the road from the. So now what you have you have the 3D model that you can, but it's not actual modeling the track of the car. You have to move with the mouse and twist it around. So that's not really what you are looking for. You can do it manually, but th there is not like dedicated tool for that in, in our 3D view. Can it do just with, uh, in 2D, 2D without uh, make drawing? Yeah, we have, we have what we call, how we call it in English, that's a good, how we call it, vehicle path. Yeah, so we have, 2D vehicle path analysis, so you can put in 2D in place, but we don't have the 3D uh, part yet. 
in Quattri, if you if you want to go to in Quattri, if you online, you can, you can follow that, but you have to keep the parameters with which type of car and which line you have to follow. It's not automatic that you say, I'm sitting in the car, it's automatic. But then, it, then you have to store the data to in Quattri and yeah. uh, by manual. And I have a question, uh, quite, quite general question. Uh, so, uh, your solution, uh, the key, what is the, what is the difference? Your solution compared with others, let's say. Because now I see that uh, you are still in partnership and collaborating with design people mm -hmm. and also in fabrication. So, how are you positioning your, your solution? Well, if talking about Tecla Civil, so where we position ourselves, that was pretty well actually explained in a previous session what Villa was showing. So if you are doing design for construction, so if you want to really do a detail, detail, uh, detail uh, models, they where we are very, very strong at. So this, this uh, uh, intersection I showed you, it's very much used. And also the road design, it's very much used in there. And then also the uh, database. So we all, for example, as built, as built uh, projects, we have them. Few of them also using Tecla Civil. So you have construction guys coming in. You have the uh, designers coming in. You have the owners coming in, and everybody's using the same, the same data. So that's 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 also, also the strong thing. And also the 3D kind of motor, that you can put all those similar than Quadri that you can put all those things together in one place. Traffic uh, agency or cities, depending on the on the on the project. Traffic agency or cities, depending on the project. Of course, the design data sometimes not something that they yeah. only, only drawings, <laughs> old fashioned way. But the new way is to store it to the client server. Yeah. Do you have to be online all the time when you're working, or? So how this actually works technically, so if you open the project, it creates what you call a virtual database in your own machine. So after that you work more or less in your own machine. And then once you press save, it saves all the data to the database. And then if we are in a field mode, what I showed you, there is offline uh, mode possibility. So I can so say that, okay, my I run off the battery. Uh, I can say that from this particular area, I can load all the project into my tablet's uh, hard drive and then use it offline. And then the, all the pictures what I take, all the notes what I take, will be then synchronized to the database after, after I get back again with the uh, Wi-Fi or with the network. So the office job is mainly online, but you work with the virtual one thing and then you upload the data in the end of your job. Um, can you like import files from uh, AutoCAD CD <laughs> and vice versa? Can you export it to AutoCAD CD? Yeah, so DVG is a basic format. So you import data in DVG, uh, use it as the reference. And then when you have DVG, I want to create, for example, some objects which are in a DVG to model it in Tecla Civil, there is tools for that. So if you have pipe network, big one, in several layers in DVG, you can, there's uh, tools to transfer them to the civil. And then on the other hand, you have done your job, like if my battery would last, I could show you. But uh, yeah, the whole, the you can ac export, of course, the same thing in DVG also. Yes. Anything else? Well, DVG, DGN, then we have LandXML, different types of LandXML formats. Then we have XYZ formats for, for terrain models and, and uh, for things like that. And then, uh, what did I forget? SketchUp, you can export SketchUp. Uh, what else? Shape. In Finland, we have 42 different formats. Yeah. We have more than you need. Do you have any we special? Get if you need more. <laughs> That's also a question for you. Do you have any special format which you use here, which are 
unusual to us. Is it any other than DVG or LandXML? I guess not. DGN? Yeah. So those we can do. Okay, thank you. So if you have any other questions, whatever, you can either contact us or then you contact Ernestas or eBeam Solution guys. And then, then we, they will uh, they will then get back to us and we get back to you with the more detailed stuff if, if necessary. Yeah, that's one option also. <laughs>